Hi, welcome to the single track session number 48. It's August. It's hot. And we're in Studio 78 here at 22nd Street Trailhead. It's hot. Yeah. It's muggy. Yeah. Joel's got pants on. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> had, to look, had to look good for work today. Yeah. That's uh, so pants. Oh, yeah, I know. Scares me. No mas pantalones. Mm hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's August, so we're moving right along. Uh, kind of quicker than I'm hoping right now, but uh, what can you do, right? No. You can't slow down time. I think that's what happens when you get older. Time goes by faster. I know what. And I, I'm old. Mm -hmm. I just found that out yeah. like within the last week. Did you? Me and my wife were talking, and I thought, I'm old. Yeah. I'm like, damn it. So you can't slow down time unless you're running an ultra and you walk. So that's the only way you can slow it down. <laughs> um. Yeah, man, you had a great episode uh, this week with Gabe. Yeah, I think we touched on a lot of good, fun stuff. Yeah, what a what an in-depth show. Yeah. I mean, just lots of fun little chatter on what he's done, what he's got going on. Right. From soccer coaching to, yeah. you know, that little race called Hard Rock. Mm -hmm. Quick little jaunt in the San Juans. Right. Uh, but what a neat guy, though. I mean, we both had the pleasure to meet him face to face. Right. But even now, you know, the comfort level and you know, right. seeing him again at his race and then uh, you talking to him over the phone. Just such a neat guy. He is a good guy. Uh, the photos you saw from him from Hard Rock, he's always smiling. Mm -hmm. His family's there. Yep. Just one of those guys that you could try hard as you can not to like. Right. And you just go to bed feeling dirty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's a good dude. <laughs> He's a really good dude. Yeah, I like him. Uh, so if you haven't listened to that, head back. Uh, episode 94, we had him on earlier in the year in February, I believe. And if he if he gets on the podium for Run, Rabbit, Run, we'll get him back on the show. Why not, man? There you go, Gabe. He went he, back on. Get he, on the podium. He can catch up to his coach, right? That's on, right. On appearances. Yeah. Um, we got some stuff going there. But, yeah, it was a good show. Um, you know, we had a busy week last week. Um, with you know the podcast and of course we had that little little get together in Salt Lake the outdoor retailer show the final one the final one in Salt Lake City so mm -hmm. I'm a little bitter a little uh, I'm not happy about it right congratulations Denver but that's about all you got they played a better game than we did yeah the money game and we love the outdoors mm -hmm. our people do so that's right yeah, but, uh, yeah, so that'll be over in Denver going forward, I think, in January and July of next year. But uh, we were lucky enough to get down there uh, to check out some stuff. Yeah. Right? So we went to some, like, places we knew, right? Like, we knew Ultimate Direction would be there. Right. Some stuff we knew, just kind of checking out their, their newer, newer product newer, technologies. Yeah. But we also came across some stuff we weren't aware of. And sometimes that's my favorite part. Yeah, I think that the lack of big names down there opened up booth space for people that would normally be out in the pavilion. Yeah. That's they, what it seemed like to me. Yeah. So they were a little bit more accessible to us. Yeah, because they were missing uh, Goo wasn't there. Obviously, Patagonia wasn't there. Hoka. Scott USA. Hoka. I think Brooks wasn't there. Right. If I remember right. But yeah, there's a lot of companies not there. And if you felt it when you were walking around. It yeah, was especially. Less busy. Especially their own, like, Pa those those locations we just named had their spots. Patagonia Big was like the spot. core of yeah. the whole thing, and them not being there, and so you definitely felt that. But it was it, like Joel mentioned, it kind of opened up this show for some of those newer, smaller, right. lesser known companies. Yep, they can get on the main floor. Yeah, main floor, kind of everybody's grill. The pavilion was still there. There were still some good companies out and there. It seemed like the pavilion was taken over by knockoff brands. Yeah, in the back. In the back, for sure, you walk back one. there, and you. You were like, well, th well, this stuff looks familiar. I've seen it somewhere before. Yeah. And you're like, The logo oh, is similar. You guys are <laughs> knocking all this, all these brands off. Yeah, you talk to the one guy in that booth. He's like, yeah, check out our, you know, our, our, our jackets. Check, check out our, our Udini. Yeah, our Udini. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go to the next one, and they, it was just, it was like Joel said, they had everything. You know, yeah, it wasn't like specializing. It was like, yeah, we've got this. We've yeah. got this. Exactly. You want you want a pocket knife? I got one for you. I got one right here. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, you want some gels? I got one. Yeah. <laughs> what else did you need? Yeah. Botox? Yes. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that was so weird. So if you were down there and you were out in pavilions, you saw some weird stuff, stuff that I haven't seen before down there. Yeah. It was literally natural Botox. Yeah, they had a little couple Botox things, so that was kind of funny. It was weird. Took me by surprise. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we have a few things that we could talk about yeah, um, we that we came across, and there's there's I had a few that really caught my attention, mm -hmm. right? But I think my favorite one that stood out for me, the one I'm most excited about, yeah, is Untapped. 
Yeah, that was top three for me. That for was sure. uh, so Untapped. They're out of Vermont and they do uh, gel, but it's out of syrup. Mont- Vermont syrup. Maple syrup. Real syrup. Maple syrup. Not and, the fake stuff. And so right now in their product line, they've got a maple syrup gel. Yep. Very, I'm going to say runny for lack of a better word, but it's, yeah, I don't mean it in thick. a bad way. Right. Because um, when you're doing all you know these races, the, the thicker for me, the worse. But Right. When you got to chew on it. That oh, gosh. Oh, man. That's the worst. So this was a little runnier. So they have one gel. Mm-hmm. They have some wafers or some uh, waffles, excuse me. Yeah. They've got the standard maple. Yeah. They've got the coffee syrup one that one's the die for and they got the raspberry which is made of real raspberries right i didn't try that one that one's really good too no, so those are the three waffles. i didn't get past the coffee maple one or yeah i didn't get past that so that's what jill's talking about you know like a month or two coming out they've got a coffee maple gel oh my gosh that we was so sam- good oh my gosh we sampled that and it was just i couldn't believe how good it was really good so good if you i mean if you're a coffee drinker yeah. you're going to appreciate this one hands down it's like breakfast coffee syrup <laughs> Well, the, here's the deal. You know, a lot of other products they're using coffee or say it's coffee. It's yeah. not coffee. Yeah. They're just formulating that taste. This is like straight up coffee, and yep. you can tell the difference. Well, that's what's great about it, too, is when you ask them how much coffee in it, like, well, since we use real coffee, it varies. Exactly. Like, they couldn't give you a percentage. Right. It's like it's between here and here. They said, well, somewhere between 45 and 65 milligrams of caffeine, just depending on the batch size. Yeah. And that's awesome. Yeah. And then they had some drinks. They had the, I think it was a ginger yeah. one. And oh, they the had ginger the tea. Co- or the ginger maple. Yeah. And then they had the maple Lemon tea, tea or something. It's, both of them were so good. Yeah. So different, opposite ends of the spectrum. Yep. But both hands down fantastic um, electrolyte energy drink. Yep. So, yeah. And the cool thing, like, it's a small company. It is. Right? I guess they've been around for like three years. Right. But they've been kind of more, you know, they're back east in Vermont. Yeah. And they're cycling. Northeast cycling, a little bit of, like, Nordic and classic skiing. Yeah. Because they're they're in with that Swix, Swix crowd group out and, there. And their know, logo is cool. It's like a maple leaf. Yeah. It's uh, red and white. But I posted something on social media about it, and people commenting, oh, I've had I've had that, or I've right. tried that, or... And I'm like, I've never heard of that. No. So I'm excited. So we, we talked with them. They're going to get us some samples to do a review with it. Yep. So we're going to test that, um, not in the luxury of being under roof and outdoor, but out in the trails. Yep. I've got one bar, two bars that I'm going to take up to, what's that place we're going to this weekend? Vaquero. Vaquero. Yeah. Taking that up there to try it out. That's what I'm doing. I got yeah. the one gel. Yeah, that's and right. The, and the waffles. Yeah, me too. So... Anyway, keep an eye on that. Untapped, U-N-T-A-P-P-E-D. And we'll have that in the show notes so you can follow up yeah, on that. Yeah, because it's super cool. And then speaking of a careless weekend, there's another product that I think we talked about having in a drop bag. Yes. That we found. Exactly. Uh, We're talking pickle juice? Pickle juice. Pickle juice. So that's the name of the company. It is the name of the company. <laughs> pickle juice. <laughs> and uh, It's not a Turtle Miller product, by the way. Yeah. It's legit. Thank, thank goodness. Yeah. And it's interesting because some of the stuff they were saying about it is it's it plays on your mind almost, right? It, exactly. Because if you look at the ingredients, you're like, there's nothing in here except for sodium, vinegar, and water. Yeah. But w- I guess when it touches your tongue, right, you get the receptors in your body that tells you, hey, this is coming. Yeah, exactly. And so it's like supposedly, and again, I haven't tried it. I, well, I drank some, but I wasn't cramping or thinking about it. I was walking around. It tells your body, hey, your cramping areas, it's immediate. Like, right, I don't know. It's like a, it's like a CNS. It's like a central nervous system type of response. You know, those receptors are are um, teed off, right? So they're activated, and then they've got this downstream type of effect. Uh, might not exactly be the sodium that's actually helping, which probably isn't. It's more of the receptors saying, "Hey, here comes some electrolytes. Here comes some water." Yeah, so chill out. Yeah, exactly. So, and then, you know, they've done some, te- you know, everybody does testing, but, you know, we'll check that out, too. Yeah, we'll, we'll give it a try this weekend. Yeah, and it's not, I mean, there's, it's not a, it's uh, was like a little, like, a little bit bigger than a five-hour energy shot. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what is that, like, maybe an ounce or so? Know, but it goes down knows. pretty easy. I hope so. I didn't even, I haven't tested one out yet. Yeah, so. I tried some at the show, this that little shot glass my, of it. That could ruin my race. <laughs> could ruin your day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's another one. Um, what else did we come across? The one I was most looking forward to and walked away a little bummed, even though I knew going into it, was from Petzl, their new <laughs> headlamp. Oh, yeah. The, the bindi. bindi. Yes. yes. So The Bindi is legit. It is. It's like supposedly weighs 1.5 ounces. Like negative. Yeah. It's it, negative. It doesn't weigh. It takes yes. weight off you. Exactly. The more you wear, the lighter you yeah, get. Yeah, the, the more you wear, <laughs> the lighter you get. You can wear it around your neck, your head. 
It's the torso. It was awesome. Yeah. The the sit the mechanism like it's like a lanyard, but it's, it's a like a bungee, bungee cord. Bungee cord, right. but it's more secure than their zipka. Yeah. That bounces a little bit more. So this you can wear around your neck. Uh -huh. You can zip it to your head. Right. Wrap it around in your hand. Mm -hmm. um, Different the, colors. Oh, it's cool. Yeah. It's so light and it's bright it's and it's so bright. It's a perfect one. Me and Joel have been talking about, mm -hmm. but it doesn't come out to like March of next year. Which is dumb. Oh man. Come on, Petzl. And I couldn't. Even this take would a be picture great for a stocking stuffer. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't even know it was in there. I know. But yeah, so they wouldn't even let us take photos of it. Uh, yeah, those can you believe that? But you can Come find on. it online. I know, it's, right? It's, it's already online. out there. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys got to take a picture of this. It's already out on the internet, though. Yeah, you it's ding dongs. It's the Bindi. It's the B I N D I from Petzl. And Check it was it like out. 25 bucks. Oh, the price. I when we asked Something the price, like that. it was like, yeah, I think it was like 30, 35. Yeah, like, well, can we have one right now? Yeah, I'm like, I'll give you 50. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> seriously, it was uh, the price points on, and this, it's a, it's gonna be. Absolutely, a piece I will get yeah. the first day I can. Yeah, for sure. Um, Even so though they're being kind of ding dongs about it. Yeah, maybe yeah, I don't know. So anyway, yeah. so that was one. Then what else did you come across? Oh, there was another nutrition company, uh, Gorillaly Goods. They're out of Wisconsin. Gorillaly. Gorillaly. Gorilla. Gor Gorillaly. Gorillaly. Something I don't know. <laughs> it's a gorilla. Darn it. <laughs> With a Y at the end. <laughs> gorilla. He's got the paper. I do. I'm looking at it. Gorilla. Gorilla. Gorilla Goods. Gorilla Goods. And that yeah. was good. Yeah. Okay. Go really Goods. Gotcha. Um, yeah. We we were over eating these sandwiches that never go bad. <laughs> they got like a four year shelf life. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they actually tasted pretty good. But we knew we were going to be in trouble. That's all we ate that day. That was like full on preservative yeah. central. Yeah. As soon as we turned around, this uh, Gorilla place was behind us. And the dude goes, this is going to change your life. Oh, yeah. When somebody tells you that, you either got to step up or you run away real quick. Yeah. So we stepped up. Yeah. And every single sample was freaking good. It was so Holy good. cow. Oh, man. So they're based out of Wisconsin. And more so these are come in. So they come in the case, and there's 12 packs to a case, and it's about one ounce per package. Um, and they're different, basically, granola. So they have a pumpkin seed and kale, which I think is the first one we tried. And that got us hooked right away. And then, then every time we go to a new one, like a new sample, the dude goes, this one's going to change your life. Oh. And, you know, you got to be either tired of hearing that or you're going to buy into it after the fourth time he says it. Uh, they have a sweet curry, cashew, and fruit. That was Maze balls. Well, they've got savory and they've got sweet. sweet. So they nail everything. Yeah, yeah. They have a pumpkin seed, hemp and cilantro. So good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Nut goji and cacao nibs. I'm not sure we tried that one. Um I did. the fruit and nut and then the other one that was surprising. Dark chocolate fruit and nut. That one was super yummy. That one that tasted like bananas was my favorite, like oh, sweet. Yeah, one. that one was super good. It was a Which fruit one? one? That was the nut goji no. Well, it was one of them. Yeah, and that was good. Fruit and nut. It was the jungle. Fruit the, that's nut. what it was, the yeah. jungle, I think. So these guys are based out of Wisconsin, um, super small mom-and-pop company, uh, good folks. Uh, we'll have that information on the uh, show notes as well, so you can go order a case of those. I think we should order a big big case, like a sampler. That would be awesome. Because well, this stuff's pretty yummy. I, I'd use this, you know, Later in a like a hundred miler. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just get something solid in there. Change up what I'm eating. Change the flavor palette. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And it's healthy. <laughs> it you is. know what I mean? It's like nuts and stuff. Plus right? that guy said it was going to change my life. Yeah, and if it's going to do that, mm -hmm. like you said, you either jump on or you run away. Yeah, I so know. I'm jumping. We were on. game. We stepped right up. To I need that. the life changer right now. I'll have some. Yeah. So that one was tasty. Um, then the drink dude, the the guy that's got the coffee drinks. Oh my gosh. No brainer. No brainer. K N O W. Colorado, brainer. right? I think so. I think they are. So, I thought they were just a creamer, and I just walked by them. Yeah, to the K tape. But yeah, I went right to this K tape. I went to the the K T tape guy. Rock tape or something. Yeah, or something like that. And Eric, Eric was over there looking at the creamers. So I was like, dude, what are you doing over here? <laughs> and then I look closer, and it's really, it's like a coffee or a tea drink that's um, got MCT oils in it. And what you do is you pour, it comes in a single serve package. You pour that package into a mug, you pour hot water in there. And then you either have your coffee or your tea that's pre-mixed with MCT oils. Mm -hmm. It's a great solution for camping. Because in the past, if you go to a race, 
and what I'll, I'll do is just because I don't want to have to mess with making uh, coffee in the morning is I'll just bring coffee from the day before and drink it cold. I don't care. Ugh. I mean, if I have a microwave, I might heat it up. Yeah. But this way, you know, you can heat up some water and pour it in there and you're, you're good to go. And it tasted good. So good. They we had chai. Green tea, chai. Matcha green tea. Original. You, original coffee. And then Mocha. they had, yeah, a couple other fruity type of things. Yeah. But they're good. Oh, they were really good. Yeah. And the guy was nice. He was so cool. Yeah, Hook out of Colorado. It. Yeah, it was. A, it's a cool company, but it is. Mm-hmm. It's a perfect for camping or yeah. the night before a race. Single or, serving packets. And you know what? The other thing I've done when I've had access to hot water or even in races, I'll take those uh, Starbucks. The Vias. Vias. Yeah, I'll right? do that too. Because that's pretty much all there was. Right. But this, to me, is like the game changer for that for me. Yeah. Because it's still in a small packet. It's not the Via size. It's a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. It's like a Justin's Nut Butter package. It is. um, Size. But you can still put it in a drop bag. You still put it in your vest, for heaven's sakes, if you want to. But all you need is hot water. Yeah. And it was it was so good. It was so yummy. It's like like the bulletproof coffee style. It is. Just like that. Yeah. But it comes in a single serve package. It's already pre-mixed for you. Uh, That's something to look into, for sure. And if any of you guys look into this, communicate with them or order anything, do anything, mention us. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Because that way it helps us a little bit. But these are ones that, again, we we tried these and we're excited about. We we stepped up. We took a chance. We we yeah. accepted the risk yeah. of ingesting these foreign substances. Yeah, because right before that benefit. we had some uh, what tuna tacos. <laughs> oh, those were good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, oh my gosh, it was like buffet line on that side of the, <laughs> the we building. We hung out there for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> it's some electrolytes. We had some yeah. coffee, some tuna, some tacos, some <laughs> yeah, some space sandwiches. Yeah. Tried an RX bar. You know, those guys have been around for a while. Yeah. Good stuff. Yep. Pull the sample out of there. And, you know, I think I got a picture of all the stuff I brought home that day. I'll, I'll have that post in that. The, uh, the blog post for the single track session. And the other one we came across, speaking of headlamp, was went to Lead Lenser. Yeah, we did. So we stopped there by that booth because, you know, they're a sponsor of the Trails in Motion film, what we brought into town. Right. And so we had an opportunity because Lead Lenser's not really retail yet in the U.S. It's not a name they're, that we're they're getting there. super familiar with, right? Uh, it's over in Europe. Yeah. But uh, they had a small little hamp, the, the headlamp, the Neo, N-E-O. Ah, yeah. Eric, look at this. Yeah. Joe's like, check this out. And I look over and he turned it on. I was like, <laughs> He was seeing spots for, for a good hour. At least. <laughs> um, but we checked that out. Another, ver- it's not as small as the Bindi because there's a battery no. pack on the back. Right. Um, but it's still small enough to put in a pocket. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, you can still put in a zip pocket of your shorts, mm-hmm. uh, your, your mesh pocket on your shorts, obviously yeah. your your vest or waist belt. But right. We're looking, again, me and Joel, our goal on mine especially is to find a small, small headlamp for those early morning hours where right. you don't need a lot of light for very long. Exactly. And you don't want to carry a headlamp. The big headlamp. Yeah, so the Neo was pretty cool. And it so was. we tried that out. They didn't mm-hmm. have any samples. Uh, looks like they might be sending us some to test. Right. It had 90 lumens, I believe, and that was another cheap it was pretty inexpensive. Like yeah. under under 30 bucks. I want to say 25 ish, yeah. something in that area. It was, uh, but I think it'd be perfect for the conditions we're looking for. Oh, yeah. For the first hour of running. Yeah. Yeah, that'd I be think, great. I think for so. nothing too technical, you know? Yeah. It, just, it's just fine. Just what we were looking for. Um, God, I'm trying to remember. I think that's most of the ones I remember product wise. There's a couple other like nutrition companies we stopped by and we got samples of. Ultimate Replenisher or something was one oh, of them. Man. Ultima. Was there was it? a there was a nut butter and a bar company. I'd have to go back and look, but they were pretty good. And, um, we'll just have that in the show notes. I can't remember that name offhand. It was tasty. Yeah. Um, we stopped by the Topo shoot yep. place. We got my size in those, so I might give those a spin. They had some really good looking. Um, Road running shoes that would be great for like everyday wear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, pff. everyday wear shoes, right? I mean, we'll get to that. Man, that's probably the last one we'll talk about. Let's let's save that one. So let's just wrap up Topo. Their trail running line, I don't think, it's really made that much of an improvement over no, the last it year. It looks the same. like the same. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Still looks like it's kind of clunky. I think they have the run the, the second version of one coming, right? But they didn't have like major changes or right. or overhauls, right? Which is, I mean, once you find something that works, yeah, then great. Stick that, with it. They had that one where they have the built-in gator now you can use, where they have right. the gator attachments on the shoe, yeah, which was, which was pretty different. innovative. Yeah, that was innovative. Mm-hmm. So there was that for sure. Yeah, um, we stopped by. Well, we just looked at Scarpa. We just yeah, walked by them. Nothing real quick. I don't know. Getting there. Working their way in. I think that they're always going to be kind of niche like kind of like that alpine running, scrambling type of approach shoe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we did not go. You went to La Sportiva. I didn't. Right? For a minute. 
Yeah. Yeah, for a minute. Went to UD for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, they got a couple, they got their, what is it, their race fest, like their marathon race fest. Looks pretty good. And you know what else? Their FKT bivy looks pretty good. Oh, that looked tight. That's crazy. That looks so nice. So they got like this little bivy tent mm-hmm. uh, called the, F, I think it's the FKT bivy. Yeah. Super light. Yep. Just for those, you going for an FKT, you want to or sit like on the an trail. overnight, right? Yeah, yeah. right before. Mm-hmm. Just just a bivy. Those they got poles cool. too. Those yeah, poles look poles. pretty nice. They kind of look like those Scott poles from last yeah, year, to be all, honest. All yeah. uh, non folding. Right. Non folding is yeah. just a uh, standard length, um, just really fast. Uh, the rest of their lineup kind of was the same from last year. No big improvements coming out of that. But I do have a question for anybody who has a UD vest. That's so, a good way to pose it, I think. So here's a question for you. I've been looking at a UD vest because I, I'm looking for a different vest. But they have this material on there. It's like white. It's like a. It's not mesh. It's a little bit stiffer. Yeah. Is that the best word? I think it's so. It's on their vests. And right. I haven't wore one. And I'm just curious how comfortable or scratchy or stiff it right. feels. And another thing that they have is in the lower back. Oh, yeah. They have a plastic piece that an- that's the anchor for the adjustment straps. Yep. Do you feel that plastic piece? Yeah. That's, that's another question. Because that's one thing that really stood out to us was right. that material seems stiff and rigid, right. not comfortable at all. Right. And then the plastic piece in the lower back. If, we if didn't get the chance to talk to any of the UD people because they were too busy. Yeah. There was one that person in the booth, and she was busy. She was. Um, let's see. What else? UD. Um, any other products that we stopped by and looked at? Um, Tailwind, nothing really new came out of those guys. No, nope, just yeah. can't same old, same old. Yeah, they're just in their groove right now. Um, I think that's all I got. Hmm. We didn't get a chance to talk to the cricket guys. Never saw their. Never booth. saw those guys, but we saw him. Yeah, the cricket bars. Right. So I think one of the first booths that we went to, well, I went to besides. Um, Tailwind, where we saw Corey Reese and said hi to him, yep. was Ultra. Yep. And we were checking their shoes out, and their shoes for next year look really nice. They've got some nice knit uppers that look really comfortable now. Yep. And it seems like most shoe brands are kind of going to that um, that knit upper, that one-piece knit upper, or that one-piece um, uh, with some welded overlays on it. Yeah. Well, that's and what Pearl's done for a while, too, right. before. It's just that one-piece, no-seam upper yeah. with the 3D overlay. Yeah, exactly. And they look like they're just getting better and better every year on the iterations of them, where they're becoming more and more comfortable. I think the only drawback to that is you just get a little bit of structural integrity that's lost out of that, so you give up that comfort for that, which is fine with me. I don't really care. But some people get all bent out of shape about it. But their shoes look great, comfortable. I don't think any big changes on those, to be honest. Yeah. But their big change was in two categories. Their apparel and their everyday shoe. Yep. Their everyday shoe, as soon as we saw that, I mean, everything <laughs> just <laughs> fell away. Our focus was immediately on the everyday shoe. This is something that's going to be in our our everyday apparel yep. for forever and a day. Yep. They look so good and so comfortable. They looked comfortable they looked good you could wear them with khaki pants yeah you can wear them with shorts yeah without socks mm-hmm. and they had some of the leather ones too that were kind of yeah. more dressy style exactly mid, like mid cut you can wear them like i can wear them over to the hospital when i have to go to the hospital and do stuff yeah. right Just i could do that really good looking colors mm-hmm. uh, and styles and they're gonna be comfortable because it's a little bit bigger toe box it's yeah. got that zero drop oh so good. Super psyched for those. So this is Brian, pa- or not Pal, but Brian um, Beckstead. Beckstead was telling us, he goes, you know, this is a good way to get people introduced to the zero drop concept. If we've got them in the zero drop shoe for most of the day and they're not being active other than walking around, this is a great way to introduce them to this concept of zero drop. Instead of throwing them into the run shoes and saying, okay, we want you to run 10, 20 miles a week in this zero drop and then progress and get more mileage. This is the faster way to get there. Well, it's kind of like the reverse as well. If you're wearing their shoes to run in and you're putting mm-hmm. a lot of miles, but then you're done running and you throw on exactly. eight mil drops or right. something your, else, your you're regular dress shoes, your right? Or your up, regular right? casual shoes, yeah. or eight mil. Well, yeah. I mean, let's face it, a lot of the a lot of us runners wear running shoes as casual shoes. I do. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. I just got my running or shoes. Or my Sanooks. Yeah, and you know what do you wear? Well, it's the same. But if you're running in the ultra and you're wearing your running shoe with a six, eight, ten mil drop. Totally different. Joel's got some foul water going on over here. He's drinking something, nah. He, something he didn't get from OR. 
That was gross. I think that cap's got some funky monkey in it. Uh oh, need to rinse that cap out. The wire's okay though. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just a smart concept, but it's also a shoe that it's not just a casual shoe. It's one you'd want to wear because it does look good. Yeah, it looks right? just on it point. It doesn't look like a yeah. running shoe. It does. It's a casual. Like they even had one that reminded me of the old Adidas Rod Laver. Yeah, I was exactly. Like, What's up? Yeah, I'm gonna love those things. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, their shoes are. The casual shoes, we're pumped to get get some of those. Yeah, for sure. Those are be out this fall. Fall, I believe. Yeah. And then uh, then their apparel line is taking some huge steps, in my opinion. Yeah, um, this is their third year. Yeah, I think, I think so. Mm-hmm. I think it's their third year, and they've made some big changes. Yep. So we got to see some some tanks, some sleeveless, some sh- you know short sleeve shirts. Yeah, we they've got the singlets, puffy the, coats. Exactly. The puffy looks really good. The tights. And the tights with the puffy in them yeah. looks really good. Um, and then we had a picture posted of Joel in the rain jacket. That late rain jacket's legit, folks. Dude, like six something ounces. Yeah. And it's stretchy. Yes. And soft. Now I tried Ooh. on the medium. Yeah. And normally I'm okay in the medium, but I would have to go down to a small. And I felt really good about myself because the first time I've wore a medium that fit me since grade school. Yeah. So no, I'm just kidding. It was probably junior high. No, it was high right. school. I was a medium. But you can get in that. That thing stretches unbelievably. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Tape seams, so you're not gonna get wet. Yep. Um, it, it's easy to stuff in your your backpack. Um, it, that'll That's be something I'm, that I want to get. See, and I've been holding off on a rain jacket. Right. I, I don't want. I want something light. Right. Patagonia has one's like six ounces. Mm-hmm. I want to stay in that realm, that light stuff. Right. And I've been holding off, and now I'm like, is this coming out for the before the bear? And he's like, yeah, it'll drop before the bear. I'm like, yeah. Sign me up, dude. Well, I think it's like they want like gear of the year type of thing, oh, yeah. whatever award that Outside is. Outside magazine yeah, or something. something like that. Right. But they're uh, they're tank top too. They're singlet. Yes, oh, those looking look good. good and soft. Oh yeah. And then we're looking at their shorts. Made shorts some big improvements there. Next year mm-hmm. look good. Big improvements on those. Huge improvements. So uh, yeah, c- good job, uh, team at Ultra. Yeah. For uh, stepping the game up on some of those yeah. things. Well, they're continuously innovating on that side, yeah. right? Which is awesome to see. The shoe size, I think that they're they're still trying to get consistency. I think that's been kind of their big problem the last few years. Yeah. Is making sure that the sizing's the same uh, throughout the the shoe runs, you know what I mean? Yep. So between different so models. So if you're an 11 and a half, you're an 11 and a half. Yeah, it doesn't matter which model you're using. Yeah, um, yeah we've so seen some problems there for sure. They'll get worked out. Yeah. Um, what else? I think that was it. Just I like, mean, you know, we saw some cool people, though. We did. You know, we saw Corey, hung out with him for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Corey Kind of heckled him. We did. He was uh, He's working on a really cool project. Another book. I think that you guys have seen this. It's one of the initial founding members of the Bad Wire 135. He's talking to this guy. Yep. That's some gonna killer write stories. And that book's going to be out by spring of next year, it sounds like. Yep. And that'll be, and we'll have him on. We've already booked him. We did. Basically. We mm-hmm. booked the book writer. That's right. Um, for the show. Um, of course, we uh, couldn't do much without hanging out with Turtle Miller for a bit. Yep. Saw him for a hot second. He, he was a riot. He was I, heckling people. I actually had a little bit longer time with Turtle. Yeah. You um, got to drink the Gose. Yeah. The Gose. The uh, rhubarb. Raspberry. Beer. Sour. Yeah. Yeah. In this burning heat. Yeah. But it was pretty good. Um, right. We saw Peter Downing at Suffer Better. Good guy. Hung out with him for a couple of days. Uh, Chrissy Mel. Mm-hmm. Talked saw to her. her. She's like the most kind individual ever. Yep. Good lady. Uh, and also, we were pretty fortunate. The altar booth, you know, I went down and uh, Thursday as well, mm-hmm. um, but we met Meredith. Yeah. Uh, Meredith June, Meredith Edwards. Right. You know, um, so. She's based out of Jackson. And the week before, we talked about what she did on the double. Uh, uh, double grand. grand F- 50K. Right. And so her and Jason Slarb and Jake, I think is the other guy. Or, yeah, I think Zach Bitter nope. was there. No. Nope. Oh, you're oh, talking the, about the, the Grand. The, the, Sorry. The Grand. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah and so we got to hear stories First about hand. that. Yeah, right. from her. And it was pretty cool. It was. And uh, with Jeff Browning, we got hung out with him for a little bit. Yeah, the you night did. Be- oh, yeah, the night before, hung out right. with Jeff a little bit. Um, so, yeah, it was just, just a slew of cool people down there. Yeah, it's good stuff. That we got to catch up with and see and talk to and swap stories. Yeah. Um, so overall, I think it was a good good time down there. It's just still super sad it's leaving Salt Lake City. It's new opportunities, right? Yeah. So now i got to figure out how to get to Denver twice a year. Once a year. Yeah, summer. Summer. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of want to go to January just because it's the first one, just to see what happens. Yeah, Like, they got to do something like a fireworks show. <laughs> no, it's not Blue Man happen. Group. No. Something. they got to do something. No. Um, what else? Uh, let's 
kind of get after it now. What's been going on? Ricky Gates finished his Transamericana run. Oh, congratulations. That's right? awesome. Yeah. Such a cool story. And again, man, make the freaking coffee table book and I'll be happy. Yeah. Jump on that, Solomon. Um, Speed Goat 50K was last weekend. Yeah. Pretty legit. Probably um, the most iconic start ever. Jeez, man. And right? you know what's funny is the day before, I knew that he, he told me he was going to do that. Right. And I thought... I, if you I, haven't seen it, maybe we'll, we'll post a link to the video. Yeah. That so, was some funny So stuff. Turtle decided to race out the gate. He was going to take it to the leaders right away. And apparently he talked smack before the race. He, he let them know what he, he was going to do. Jim Walmsley. Yeah. And, you know, so let's go this. We kind of had talked about the top three we thought. Yeah. But that was before when he Walmsley was running. So <laughs> give us a break yeah. on that one. Uh, but yeah, Turtle was a riot in that mm -hmm. one. Finished it. Good job to Turtle. I know. Congratulations. That's, uh, but that's a hard race. As we mentioned, Walmsley came away with a new course record in yep. 504, mm -hmm. which is uh, pretty stout. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> um, second place, Tim Tolufson. Third yeah. place, Sage Kennedy. Fourth place, Dylan Bowman. Right, right that's, on. Uh, that's a heavy top four. Yeah, it is. Wow. Any of those guys could win that race. Yeah, and on the women's side, course record fell too. Yeah. Anna Mae Flynn, 618. Second, Kelly Wolf in 628, which was better than the old, co or 627, which was better than the old course record. And then right. Brittany Peterson. Right on. The top three for the women. So. All fast people. And again, lots of races last weekend. We're not going to cover them all. Another we talked local about the one. backyard. Tushers was yeah. last weekend. The Tush. That was a bone killer. Yeah. It was like 22 or 26% finish rate. Right. Not a DNF rate. That's kind of low. <laughs> yeah, like a... <laughs> Finish rate. Eighty percent dropout rate. Holy cow, man! So bad weather there. Tough course. Did they have some bad weather? I didn't check out. Yeah, the I guess they had it, some pretty gnarly rainy. weather. Rainy. Yeah. That'd be cooling it off. But um, tough, tough course anyway. Yeah, it is. Uh, they hit so, like eleven climbs on that course. Yeah, that's crazy. Like legit, like over like a thousand feet each. That's crazy, man. What a our buddy uh, Brad Sween finished that one. Yeah, he he's one of wrecked. the twenty-two percent <laughs> or so. <laughs> he did some uh, hill repeats the morning after and flip flops that looked pretty stout. Yeah, like two feet climbs. Uh huh. He had uh, to go back to bed after that. Yeah, it was fun. So uh, yeah, so a couple, just a couple races there. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't really look at a whole lot what's coming up this week. Um, I know there's some races, but it's because El Vaquero's coming up. Yeah, yeah, it's one of my favorite races. Uh, this weekend we're gonna see a lot of people up there. Mm -hmm. um, should be. Slarbs in it. There's there's some power stash. Is he running? I can't remember. If I he's think running. so. I think there's a pretty good uh, list of runners for this one. Yeah, the top five is going to be stout. Yeah, uh -huh. even though I don't think Luke's going to run it. He's not yeah. that I'm aware of. But so uh, there's a chance his record could fall. Very well, because the course conditions are supposed to be pretty good. Yeah, they're going to be on gone. Point. Temps in Afton is like 83. So up predicted. there, 70s maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, exposed. Yep. So it'll be interesting. They got the lakes to cool off though. Yeah, lots of creeks to cross this year. They yeah. cannot stay dry, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, should be a good time up there. Um, what else? Kachina Moza, old school race. Oh yeah, very Is that old this weekend? school. Next weekend, something like that. That's a good question. It's been I'm around for sure. a long time. Yeah, it usually I think is this weekend. It's but one of the original ballbusters. Yeah, from John Bozong from yeah. the Squaw Peak Fifty. Uh, but yeah, there's a slew of other races. We're starting to get into some of the bigger ones, like distance wise too, like consistent. You got the Wasatch, the Bear, uh, uh, Waldo, coming up in a Leadville, weeks. Mm -hmm. you know, some of the Run Rabbit Run, obviously. Right. So uh, some the of the U longer 100 milers having a test run. Oh, yeah. Is it this weekend or the weekend the after? The 11th. Right? Whenever the 11th and 12th is. Those are good looking pictures that are coming out of that event. Sean Blanton. Blanton? Blanton? Mm, I'm not sure what his anyway. last name Georgia Death Race. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and speaking of Georgia Death Race, lottery's open. Lottery's uh, open. Barely. Yep. Closes quick. But, yeah, that Ute course looks beautiful. Yeah. I think <sighs> he's, he's going to do a good job with that race. Yeah. You know what's great is he's super passionate about what he does. Yeah. And he's pretty detail-oriented, too. Mm -hmm. So that's really good, especially in a first. I mean, he's got two guys running the course this year just to make sure. Yeah. Right? The pre-race, uh, pre, yeah, pre-run it so he can work out logistics. Yeah. So that's That awesome. says a lot about an RD. Oh, and speaking of, and we can drop this because it was on social media, but Canis Hart. Yeah. It's been posting about a new 50K in Park City in oh. June. Wow. wow. Yeah. Um, really? Yeah, looking at like a June 30th date. Do we know where that's at? No, he didn't just bulge a lot, but he was. So here's what another we reason know I him. like Canis. We Canis. need to call him. Here's another reason I like him. He posted on a few web, I think Park City run trail runners and, right. and the Wrangler page. But the cool thing about it is he tagged some race directors. Okay. Because he had questions on what's a good weekend. Okay. And he tagged like Jim Skaggs because right. Jim does the Logan Peak. Which is the week before. Yeah. Well, it's the, oh, it's the usually it's of Western States. So this yeah. will be the week before the 30th, though. Okay. But he at least talked. That's the same week as 
Bryce. It might be. Yeah. But he, he put a couple RDs on there just to check. Like, yeah. hey, I don't want to bump anybody. I don't want to step on your toes. But, you know, and Jim Skaggs made a great comment. He goes, you know, peop, it would pull people from my race, but there's so many races now that it's hard to say. And he, Jim's like, right. I'll come up and run it. Yeah, you know, there but, you go. Uh, so yeah, 50k in Park City. That'd be nice. I don't be, know if Canis is putting it on. He might be, and I would suspect by be his posting. Be interested to see if they could put it on some trails that have not had a race on yet. Yeah, so that would That'd be, be pretty fun. cool. Yeah. So breaking news, breaking news. If you're not on those Facebook All pages, right. um, let's see what else we got. Uh, Strava week. Uh, distance John Paul Ogden 105.3 wow and he ran a 100 mile I think the high lonesome if I remember right well that's a good looking race yeah mm -hmm. uh, Danny Weidenberg ran that finish posted his buckles first year of that race yeah they had good looking swag tough weather yeah in there yeah they had some rain it yeah. looked like yep uh, wish we'd have some rain run time Andy Noise 3137 and climbing John Paul Ogden 21,987 feet nice so great job there yeah and now we got to jump to the dreaded part this week is where'd your feet take you? Oh, man, it's getting hard every week. You guys are starting to really make this difficult. Which is good. That's what we wanted. This is my, and we say this every week, but this for sure is the week that had to me the most mm -hmm. legit ones. Well, they came in hard and heavy right away. Yeah. Right? Lori Sipa oh. just crushed it yeah, out of the gate. Yeah, she set the standard, right? She did, set yeah. Set the bar. And uh -huh. then someone posted on it. Something like oh, yeah. winner. Yeah, winner, <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> um, but there was, again, there was a lot, and this is hard, and it's, and it's bad because it's like, okay, that's a winner, that's a winner, that's a winner, mm -hmm. but we can't. Right. right? No. We're going to stick to one. We do. Um, Any of these could have won that we're going to talk about. Yeah, so jo Joel already mentioned Lori C, but it's South Phoenix, sunrise and a double rainbow, no uh -huh. filter. Yeah. Dude, that was insane. Yeah, that was, she was going to win for me. Yeah. For, for sure. That was insane. Jeff Hart had a good one. Mm -hmm. Mount Baker. Chris Ward had another one in Arvada, sun, uh, Sunrise one. Right. Unreal. Ryan Delaney, Red Pine Lake. Yeah, That's he's been like, crushing it. I want that as a tattoo now. <laughs> yeah. Look at that picture. Um, oh, my gosh. What are some other ones? Ryan Robery again. Yeah, another, uh, th like three weeks in a row. Oh, I forgot some of the names. Uh, John Bernheisel, Bryce Canyon. That was yeah, a good well, one. Yeah, that was another one. That's that was like selfie. top three was for it me. Jason or John? I get the names wrong. I should have uh -oh. wrote them all down. Well, I'm trying to go off memory, and I said earlier I'm getting old. And I left my phone in the car. Too so. many, too many headers. Um, what was another one? Uh, uh, the guys from um, Tushers. Oh, there's some good ones. I think ones. Logan Ledford posted the nice oh, one from yeah. Tushers. Tushers had some good ones. Mm -hmm. uh, High Lonesome had a couple good ones. Right. So some of the races that people are Which in. is always cool to see. The people took some time and posted pictures. From the their race experience, I like that. Um, I'm gonna name a couple more, and then we'll have to announce a winner. Okay. One thing, I, why I'm doing it though, Matt Ozanic posted one, um, and he, I, if you read his comment on it, was what there was a comment that got me, and it really made me give me goosebumps. Yeah. He said, "Good people that have faith in you, that's like the best, right? That right. help you get." By those finish lines, and that's so true. Right. How many times have you wanted a DNF and you had your pacer or a friend go, "Nah, you can do it, man. Come right. on." Um, so that's so true. Uh, let's see. What else did we have? Uh, yeah, Ryan Delaney had some good ones. Matt Matt Anderson, he was sweeping Tushers. That was killer. Right. Um, Aaron Hill, Speed Goat 50 picture. Yep. Man, those flowers are just banging up there right now. Right. Uh, Leslie Howlett from Tushers. Right. Another great one. Uh-huh. Um, John from Canada. Oh, yeah. Panoramic shot. That was right. insane. Oh, Eric Poole, Indian Peaks oh, Wilderness. Yeah. He was definitely Ooh, top man. three for me. That was nice right uh, ryan roberry like i mentioned again mm -hmm. um where else are we oh gifford horace uh, oh yeah that was a good show one and crested butte with the wildflowers right the flowers just same thing there yep uh, megan martinez yeah lake blanche we've got a few of those uh from lake blanche in the past always i can never have enough pictures of that, that she was one. top four yeah she had a couple there mm -hmm. um what was the other one that I had in here that I really liked? It was Jason Bernheisel. I apologize mm -hmm. um, on the name. Oh, uh, Douglas Smith coming right. down Twin Twin Peaks because yeah. there's water. I like water. Um, so yeah, that I mean Rachel Zeller again, crushing it. Um, so that was kind of. I mean, there's a lot. There's still a lot more. Oh yeah, but that uh, we can't name them all. Yeah, but those I think, were the highlights I think from the week. And I'm. I'm your turn to choose this week, and I'm torn on this one because there's two that like are outstanding. You gotta make a decision. You, I know I do. You can't you can't whiffle waffle. Like I know that. that. Oh, I want one of those uh, untapped waffles right now. Right. Uh, I'm gonna go with Lori Seppa. 
That Are was, you? Yeah, I didn't think you were. I know you didn't, but that was really nice. Um, and I just looked at him again, too. Well, but she's been really consistent with posting. Um, she's put the effort in. She she definitely came up with a winner. That was crazy good. So we'll be posting that one. And also, Lori, you got to, you got to, we've probably had it because I know you've placed an order with us, but yeah. could you uh, email your address? Or, or message. Or message us so yeah. we can get that out to you. But if you haven't had a chance, go back and look at that. It's pretty cool. It and is. for all the other ones, too. On top of that, awesome, and thank you so much. Good work this week, guys. Yeah, we appreciate it, and we'll be doing it again. Yeah, looking um, forward to definitely some pictures from Vaquero this weekend Yeah, because um, I'm just going to have my head down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. Just marching. Uh, that's about what my day is going to look like. No looking at the prettiness. I got to look at some to keep me moving Just forward. get this over with, right? And, and this is going to be kind of unspoken. So me and Joel, when we get to a show, we talk about, hey, let's talk about this. But I'm going to bring a new thing in right now. Okay. Because I have to. I have to get it, it off my chest. Go for it. I'm going to call it Studio 78 Confessionals. <laughs> <laughs> right? So so I'm, we need to have a series of these. Yeah. Right? So you, you have the confessional. I'd like to have the gospel of uh, the, the single track gospel. Okay. Right? So That'd I'll, be pretty good. I'll do the Studio 78 confessional today. This sounds naughty. I can't wait. It sounds that way. It should be. And it's if not. If it's not, you need to stop and think about that. And make it that way. That's right. So here, here's, here's what I'm faced with. And the only reason I'm saying this is if you've noticed, if you're friends with me on Facebook, I don't really put stuff out there. Right? No. I don't do personal stuff no. or anything else. I just kind of like share things or. It's not our gig. That's just I don't know. That's just me, right? I'm right. really, really keep to myself. But I'm struggling, right? I'm struggling Struggle with bus. the last month and a half. Yeah. And I had these grand ideas of what my year was going to look like. Wow. Big and plans. They've, they've kind of derailed. I started off with some hammy problems. Yeah. Worked through those. Yep. Uh, went to uh, Sink Canyon, mm-hmm. felt solid there yep. for for what it was worth. Good finish there. Had big plans for Beaverhead, and this is where things started to derail because that's when I started having problems with the piriformis and everything else. Right. So I w- I'm going into Elva Carroll. It's my fifth year. I know I keep saying that, but I wanted to have the year, right? Right. You wanted to have your best time I wanted to have ever. my your course, my PR. time ever. Right? Right. And I was all priming to do that, and mm-hmm. I felt good. It, it's not like this huge jump for my PR there, but right. it's still a PR. Yeah. A minute I, better is a minute better. As, as we've said, we're middle of the pack runners. Solid. I have no grand illusions of much more. I love Closer this. to the back of the pack now. Yeah, yeah I'm getting right. there. But I'm struggling because I'm he- getting ready for Elva Carroll, and I'm super sad. And I'm almost depressed Right. because I know I'm going to go up there and have mm-hmm. a a poor time. Well, of, okay, you're, we're going to have fun. We're, yeah, so I was saying, that's why I had we're to gonna reword that. But my time for the race, my finish time, there we go, my right. ultra sign-up time is going to be not anywhere close to where I want it. Yes. And I so I'm super disappointed. Right. And I know I shouldn't be mm-hmm. because, hey, things happen, but it's almost like I'm tired of things happening. Yeah. And... Well, it's not just a year. It's like this, this accumulation of years of kind of this... Something's always coming up, it seems like. Yeah, and I'm just... I'm really over it, and I'm right. trying to go in. I want to go in with the right mindset mm-hmm. because I, I should already know, hey, you're not, you probably won't PR. Okay. You could. You, I'm not going to What's, the, what's the fastest you've ever run that? Do you know? Uh, I have no idea what mine is. I don't either. I've taught I'd have to go back it's, and look. It's, I haven't run Mine's going to be like 8. Mine's 8.06 maybe. Mine's something like that. Right? Somewhere so that I've year. never done well If I can there. go under 8 this year, I would be so happy. Yeah, so I've never done well, but I had goals of coming like 7.20. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right? I'm like, right? I could do 7.20 on that course, coming in ready to go. Yeah. But I'm just, like, mentally, I, I'm, I, I'm not good at flipping that switch, saying, hey, just go. Mm-hmm. It's your fifth year. Get it done. That's the only goal right now is right. just get it done. But then I'm like, I should be doing so much, I should be doing so much better. Right. Well, and when so, you get hurt, it's hard. Yeah, but, right? if, but still, it's like I'm really frustrated. And wow. it's like yeah. I'm trying to get my mind right because I, I, I do this stuff because I enjoy it. Yeah. And I'm getting older, right? Yep. I mean, that's obvious. So I need to understand, and that's where I'm trying to put my head. Is this your favorite race course I've ever been on? I want to go enjoy it. Right. I want It's a monumental fifth year. There's fun, tons of fun people up there. Right. So I don't want to be a sourpuss. Right. I want to be cheery. I want to be on the course going, this is beautiful and not, right. this sucks. I want to be done. I'm not going to run anymore. You know, that sure. whole mindset. So I'm, I can't flip that switch, and I just keep every day, it haunts me. Like, yeah. as I get closer, I'm getting more anxious. Mm. And it's almost, it's like this big monkey on my back. Right. And I don't know the best way to solve the problem. Because there's really not, like, I'm not going to, from from today until Saturday, I'm not going to train hard. Right? <laughs> That's like out of day. No. Right? Yeah, so tomorrow, maybe you could do shakeout round on yeah. Friday morning. So it's not like I'm going to yeah. go in and just be, okay, now I'm ready. Yeah. You know? Um, but I'm just super bummed. 
Right. And I don't know any other way to put it. And I've already we've talked about it. I said, okay, when I get back, it is like five to six week serious hardcore training block for the bear. Yeah, I mean, if, as long as you come out of the carol healthy, yeah, right? And that's the, and that's, that's the, a big question. The question right now. with the piriformis is, right. I've never had this problem. I've gone done so many things. It's been three weeks. I went Elliot helped a lot yeah I put he, that big he elbow, put the in elbow in there and then yeah. the, knock some stuff loose but he was in there going yeah man you are bound up yeah and i'm like yeah you don't sleep i, I don't know. do anything um and then on top of that my eating has gone off because yeah. i'm super bummed right and it's easy when you're not happy to go oh yeah yeah i'll have some of that oh yeah give me one of those those are pork rinds Never chocolate had them. covered almonds we have those in the house right now Oof, from costco yeah oh man so that's my that's my studio seventy eight confessional is there you go. I am in a bad place. Right. But I'm not normally that way. Sure. Like I wanna be happy. I wanna enjoy my weekend. Which you will. But I'm trying to figure out the best way to approach it. Yeah. Like, okay, do I run out of the gate? Do I hit hard? That downhill do I hammer? Do I well, back I think off? You just try to maintain kind of like that plan. Like, okay, I'm gonna do the first climb in an hour and then I'm gonna do the lake. The lakes area within they do that in an hour, right? So you get to the top of the second one, the big downhill, yeah, and then you try to do the downhill an hour, yeah. So you give yourself a like somewhere between three hours, three hours and fifteen minutes to the turnaround. Yeah, and then th- that's what I'd like to do, and then get out of that turnaround quickly instead yeah. of hanging out. Yep, which is hard to do when there's cool people there like Ty and everybody I else. Know. But then it's like at one point the wheel will the wheels will start. The wheels Crank are going to come off. Right, the performance is going to kick in. The, the horse aid station. You think that long? Yeah, I think you're going to make it to there, no problem. Okay. You're going to make it, what is that? 19 miles. Yeah, that's bound by right. Because usually we do 17, miles. 18, and I start, my hammy starts kicking and in. And then, then after the horse aid station is where it gets hot, it gets steep. And you want to be done. And you want to be done. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not to the lakes yet. Yep. Yeah, that part's a little gnarly. It is. So yeah, that's that's my that's my push. So that's my confessional. I hate to feel this way and I don't <laughs> like to talk about it, but I want to get it off my chest. But that's what confessionals are for. That's right. And I hate to do that to our listeners. But yeah. maybe someone else has been there before and they're like, Oh, I know how he feels. Or oh, what a a hole. Whatever. <laughs> but at the end of the day <sighs> I'm just disappointed. Right. And I still have two days to get anxious about it. Like, I'm not sleeping. <laughs> I'm not sleeping. I'm not because it hurts. focusing. It hurts, and it's in my head. Because oh, I'm, you I'm, can't I'm, let it get in your head. I'm you depressed. Can't. There's nothing you can do I about guess. it. You I'm just, just go and have fun. I guess I'm depressed right. about it. And my car broke down. It's in the shop. Yeah, not the bus. Not the bus. <laughs> the, uh-huh. the nice car. We're sitting in the bus. Yeah, the nice car. So it's like these little things. Oh, right? I know. It's like the accumulation of everything. It's just wearing you down. Yeah, and so I'm like, I'm done. And mm-hmm. I, this this whole running thing is originally I did to get away from this stuff. Right. Right. And it's my escape. And now I'm finding right now, yeah. it feels like my biggest pressure. Yeah. It's choking you, huh? It is. Yeah. And it shouldn't, right? This is what we do for fun. We enjoy doing it. And right. I see so many people, and that's why I hope you guys are serious when you post on social media how happy you are. And I hope it's true and you're not trying to scam us because I thrive off that. I'm like, mm. oh, cool. It works for that person. Is that where all my money's going? I don't know, man. Scamming us? Probably. Dang. Because that's I don't do this on social media, so this is my outlet. This one time of the Studio Seventy Eight Confessional, there may be more in the future. I think there should be, and we need to maybe flip it from this kind of dreary topic yeah. to some more salacious material. If I could come up with some, I got to oh. get out of this mode to have salaciousness. Okay, we'll, we'll right? fix that this week. I haven't had a cheese curd since July tenth. See, that's your problem. I, I know the date, right? Right. You need to take <laughs> some cheese curds and rub it on that pure form. I do, right? Right. So I got one more. Elliot's going to work on me one more time before I head up there. Yeah, so be careful with that. You don't want to be bruised. Yeah. Right? I'm just, uh, at this he's point. He's big enough that he'll bruise that, that tender bits pretty easy. I'm pretty stout in the backside, Yeah, though. You are. You got a lot of junk in the trunk. Yeah, but so I don't know. You don't want to run on a bruised piriformis. Right now, I can't run on the piriformis I got. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, that's the first Studio 78 confessional. All right. Really just kind of nonsense, but uh, there you go. And we'll wrap it up. Yeah, let's couple, get out of here. A couple it's more hot. races. I just registered myself for the Capstone 50K. Yep. In uh, December. December third. Second. Second. Yep. Lottery Day announcement. Right. Um, Lot- when you say Lottery Day, you mean Western States and Hard Rock. Correct. So if you're out there running the Capstone, you will find out if you got into one of those two lotteries. Yep. Yeah. There's different distances for the Capstone. 5K, 10K, half, and 50K. There we go. Did we check on that start time? Because last week we were confused oh, about that. I didn't. We, it's either 9 a.m. or noon. I can't remember. Or 6 a.m. 
but I'll be there. Yeah, at those times. Uh, it's a good time of year to go visit St. George. It's not as hot as it normally is. Yep. It'll be a nice reprieve for the beginning of the winter weather for us up here in the Wasatch. A uh, good way to wrap up your season. So come down and visit the Capstone with us. And don't forget about the Harriman race yes. that Jim puts on. That's in two weeks. It's in a couple of weeks. Still open. Yeah. Still some spots there first year. Yeah, Be a so part of that. If you're around the Wasatch Front, Idaho Falls, Pocatello, Jackson, Bozeman, in that vicinity, this would be a great 50K or 25K to come spin those wheels on. Yep, hang out. It's going to be a good time. That's right. And then the Antelope Island 50K, 11-11. Mm. Such a good race for a beginner ultra runner yep they have a half marathon and a 50k they same do. day good stuff great burgers at the finish too yep um what else um oh i just posted about that arches race in yeah. january i'm still checking that out looks pretty cool i want to check I out the course it. i want to make sure that i'm a little bit more familiar with the trail system they're using yeah make sure there's not like a competing mountain bike event the same weekend oh, that'd be weird right? that would be a little frustrating because yeah. the mountain bikers like those trails uh, that's pretty much all I got there. Yeah. We just launched a sale for our Boko hats and visors. Woo-hoo. 20 bucks for the hat, 15 for that sweet visor. Yeah, get them. Help us uh, sell those out so we can order different styles, some yeah. new additions right. to our lineup. Update the lineup. And we need to kind of flip back to our Where our Your Feet Take You segment, Yeah. our sponsor. Yep, our sponsor for that I was going to bring up. So when uh, Lori sends us a message, we will go ahead and get the hat. That the sign garage is so mm-hmm. so graciously helped us with. Just uh, yeah. talked to them yesterday. Yeah, um, they're finishing them all up because we had sixty something of them made. I know that's all we'll make of this style. Yeah, and they're only you know you can't buy them. Nope. Um, so yeah, they're they're taking care of it for us. Uh, super good to communicate with. Great stuff. Yeah. Great prices. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're right here yeah, yeah. here for us in Utah. But they'll help right. anybody. They I know. they they'll wrap your car. They will. They they could probably wrap a fridge. If you want something in your house. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. But yeah, they, they got shirts. They do all of our stuff. Trucker hats with the patches, cork stuff. So don't right. forget to hit up Elizabeth and her husband, Nate, down at the sign garage on 25th Street. We'll have a link to them, as always. Mm-hmm. And Lori, don't forget to get us your information. That's right. Still have a couple hoodies left. Can't yeah. wait to see some up at Elva Carroll this weekend. No. Delivered a couple more yesterday. Got mine out. Got ready mine. to go. Mine's ready to go. It's going to be its maiden voyage. Haven't That's even right. put it on yet. So I'll be its maiden voyage up there because you know you're going to need it in the evening. Mm, yeah, you will. Um, I'm looking forward to that. And then the, they're going to be gone too because I know some people right now are saying, dude, it's... It's 100 degrees. Yeah. It's like, what, right swass now, it's hot 100 right degrees now. degrees while it we're is. recording this. Yeah, it is. It's swass hot. Uh-huh. I don't need a hoodie. Well, guess no. what? Times change and the hoodies will be gone. That's right. And you're going to be, dang it, I should have. You should have. That's right. <laughs> so <laughs> grab the couple while they last. Help support the show. And I think that's what we got. Mm-hmm. So we're hoping to uh, maybe do a show or two in El Vaquero. Yep. Um, if not, uh, we'll let you know who we got on next Tuesday. Have a great weekend. If you are going to be at El Vaquero, please, please try and find us. Yeah, stop by, say hi. Say hi. Uh, on Slap the course. Eric's ass. Yeah, on the on the right side. Yeah. That might help the piriformis. Yeah, yeah. It's the right side. Yeah. Um, but make sure you bring it, though, because I don't want to hurt you. I, like Joel says, I'm packing back there. He does, yeah. yeah. So don't if you're going to hit a piece of... Don't tear your rotator cuff. Yeah, if you're going to hit iron, yeah. you better bring it. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, say hi to us. We'd love to meet people we haven't met. Or even if we haven't met you before, we'd love to say hi. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. So, single track session, number 48, is out. <laughs>